this month on Earth. We introduce you to the world's most recycled material, steel. We take you to London and a master plan to make this the world's most connected and sustainable city. To New Zealand and how this birthplace to oral probiotics is keeping us healthy. To Bali, Indonesia and a bold new plan to save our ocean waters from plastic waste. My hope is that we can solve this issue and others for the benefit of our children and our children's children. And we meet a plant that could be nature's answer to our own health and wellness. Cannabis is our future uh, as it relates to healthcare. Well, it probably reminds me a little of uh, when the New World was discovered. <laughs> and people came flocking to the other side of the world not knowing what they were getting into. Up next on this episode of Earth, new technology to both harness and store our Earth's energy resources. An emergency team dedicated to fueling our response for the upcoming hurricane season training our military vets to fill our nation's skilled labor shortage, and a new life for waste material that is literally paving our way to the future. It's all coming up on Earth. I'm John Holden. Welcome to Earth. Hi, I'm John Holden, and welcome to Earth. We're starting off our show here on Laurel Mountain, West Virginia. The Earth provides many energy resources, but it's harnessing and storing that energy, like what's being done here, that's the secret to making it more sustainable. Let's take a look at how the right mix of integrated energy solutions is making a more promising green future for us all. Every country needs reliable, sustainable sources of power to survive and thrive. But in many places, the 100-year-old power grids remain unchanged. Now, new technologies and lower prices are bringing unprecedented and exciting changes that are shifting how energy is generated and how people use it. The future is very exciting because not only are we leaders in new technologies such as energy storage and combining it uh, with renewables, but we're also leaders in using drones. Uh, we're leaders in digital applications. Uh, so all, all these are ways of making energy use more efficient and easier for people. Every country must seize the opportunity to secure its own energy future. Countries like the Dominican Republic, where expensive diesel has been the predominant fuel source. A partnership with energy company AES has helped change that. The Dominican Republic is now not only more affordably meeting its energy needs in a more environmentally sustainable way, but it's also taking the role as a leader in the region. Definitivamente que el, que el país ha sido privilegiado por más de una década porque era el único país que tenía una terminal de For gas. more than one decade, we have had natural gas terminal that has also helped us mitigate fuel price increases in times in which it would have been economically unsustainable. Por más de 10 años We've had energy supplied by AES from its terminal. In difficult times, thanks to God, we overcame. The country of Panama also worked with AES to diversify its energy mix by introducing an LNG terminal and the country's first natural gas power generation plant. Our mission is to improve people's lives by providing safer and greener energy. So in the case of Panama, you had a situation where the country was very reliant on heavy fuel oil and diesel, which is both expensive and polluting, uh, whenever there was a drought, because they have a lot of hydropower. So we saw the opportunity to bring in LNG from the US, which is abundant and cheap 
and it's a stable price. So now Panama will have much more reliable energy at a much lower and constant cost than in the past. So it really allows that country and its people to consume electricity in a safer, greener, and more sustainable way. Panama and the Dominican Republic are only two of 15 countries directly served by this global power company, headquartered in Arlington, Virginia. With its diverse mix of energy generation sources and utilities around the globe, AES is committed to finding the right solutions to meet each customer's changing power needs. In AES, we do all kinds of power other than nuclear. So what we're striving for is, again, a safer and cleaner energy future. So we're able to make combinations of existing power with renewable power, renewable with batteries, to bring the cleanest and cheapest energy solution to a country. AES is also noted for being a groundbreaking leader in firm renewables through energy storage. Here at the AES facility on Laurel Mountain in West Virginia, wind turbines generate renewable energy. And all that energy can be stored for future use here at its massive battery facility located at its base. Well, this is the first time somebody combined wind energy with energy storage. And it's also participating in the biggest electricity market in the world, which is the Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland market. So this really was a, a proof of the importance of energy storage in being able to integrate more renewables into the electricity grid. We have almost 100 megawatts of wind energy. We have 61 1.5 megawatt turbines. And to our right here, we have uh, 16 containers, each containing two megawatts of energy storage. So this is enough uh, capacity to uh, supply energy to 24,000 people. Energy storage is so crucial for incorporating renewable energy into electric grids worldwide that in 2018, AES launched its joint venture with Siemens to form an energy powerhouse called Fluence, offering energy storage solutions in batteries in more than 160 countries. Fluence has the largest energy storage fleet in the world. Today we have over 700 megawatts deployed or in active deployment. The Laurel Mountain project is an example of a mid-sized project. We have projects uh, at the commercial industrial scale that are much smaller, solving problems at uh, commercial industrial uh, clients. We also have projects as large as 100 megawatt by four hour duration, so 400 megawatt hour, solving really big problems at the utility scale. So fundamentally, through the incorporation of storage into a renewable energy project, we're able to take what would otherwise be an intermittent and renewable energy source and convert it into a dispatchable and deliverable energy source that our customers can rely on and they can plan for. Energy storage is the holy grail of the renewables business. Over the last decade, we've brought uh, electricity to two and a half million people between Brazil and El Salvador. We've brought safe and modern electricity to dozens of countries around the world. So our mission remains the same. Now we have new tools to accomplish that mission. You know, energy is essential to every global citizen's quality of life. By constantly finding new ways to generate and store energy, we're also ensuring a brighter future for all of us. Our next stop, Houston, Texas. You know, when Hurricane Harvey hit here in 2017, it was a quick reminder how unavoidable natural disasters can be. They can happen anytime, anywhere. But there are people that specialize in responding to natural disasters with emergency fuel and transportation for when it's needed most, as you're about to see. The names of the storms might seem commonplace, from Hurricane Harvey in Houston, Irma in Florida, and Maria in Puerto Rico. But the devastation was catastrophic, and the needs immediate. There's nothing more frightening than a hurricane. When a city's infrastructure is destroyed and there's no electricity, the number one need is for fuel. Fuel will power the generators to keep the hospitals, the emergency response, your local community, law enforcement operational. 
So when disaster strikes, there are emergency responders ready to strike back, including a special team in the fuel and energy field called Suncoast Resources. Once a hurricane strikes, and you know the power of a hurricane, your home's been destroyed, and there's no electricity, no power, the roads are flooded, everything you depend on is yourself and local authorities, that's when Suncoast is able to come in and help supply fuel to the grid to make sure the power comes back up, make sure we're helping the restoration of the community so that your life can get back to normal. You'll see Suncoast, whether it's a tornado, ice storms, we responded to Hurricane Sandy in New York where we had over 177 trucks deployed. Most recently, Hurricane Harvey, Irma, and Hurricane Maria, which affected Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, we currently still have over 50 vehicles on the island. We've been there since the first day. We actually had drivers go over before landfall and ride the storm out in anticipation of the destruction. And we've been there since day one, supplying fuel to generators to power hospitals, schools, and local emergency personnel to help the people of Puerto Rico get back up on their feet. Anytime government or businesses need to count on somebody to bring fuel when their local suppliers can't, Suncoast Resources can be counted on. Founded by Kathy Laney in 1985 and one of the largest woman-owned businesses in Texas, Suncoast Resources is now a billion-dollar business specializing in emergency fuel response, operating from this 21-acre headquarters complex in Houston with its own state-of-the-art storm operations center, activated 24-7 during all natural disasters, as well as a mobile command unit ready to take on the road. From our mobile command center, we're able to deploy anywhere in the country and have a central location in the heart of the disaster where our drivers can be deployed from and return their paperwork. It gets extremely crazy. We have over 100 trucks and drivers that are activated into a storm, and so they all return here to turn the paperwork in and get their next loads, so it becomes very busy. That includes a modern delivery fleet of over 700 vehicles for transport of that emergency fuel virtually anywhere in the country. Many of them really quite unique in nature because they have to be specially designed for emergency delivery in any kind of condition. You know, we have had very unique vehicles. When our customers ask us, can we make a delivery? We've had to adapt. For instance, these are our modified ATVs. These particular units just returned from St. Thomas. They were being used in the mountainous regions where they could access generators inaccessible by our normal fuel trucks. This particular unit is one of our quick response vehicles. It's a smaller version of a big bobtail. This unit holds 1,000 gallons and has two compartments. It enables us to get into low clearance areas where a typical bobtail would be unable to make deliveries. So we've had to adapt, create new vehicles, and improvise where needed. And we've actually created vehicles that now are industry standards. That includes supply agreements with fuel terminals that offer access up to a billion gallons of fuel when needed at places like Kinder Morgan here in Pasadena, Texas. Fuel is vital during, during any natural disaster. Uh, first responders, uh, emergency personnel, anyone who's out trying to help in any area where a natural disaster is, is going to need fuel. And, and we provide that here. It also means an important partnership with Chevron to provide its ISO-clean lubricants that maximize performance and extend engine life in the field with cleaner running equipment. When we're talking about lubrication, particle contamination is the number one cause of lubricant-related failure in machinery. The particles we're talking about are particles that are so small that you cannot see with the human eye. The Chevron ISO-clean certified lubricants program that Suncoast Resources provides to their customers is very important. It provides a lubricant that has been tested to ensure that its filterability is not causing damage to the lubricant which could ultimately result into that piece of equipment. Lubrication is very important. It really is the lifeblood of machine reliability. There are many types of emergencies. There's a natural disaster emergency that happens when we need fuel, and there's also the emergency in plants and industrial customers across the Gulf Coast that when they need a go-to company to make sure that the products they're putting in their turbines and other industrial equipments are up and running, they call on Suncoast to ensure they're getting the proper products. In our corporate headquarters, we have a flag, an American flag that has flown over all three hurricanes in 2017. Hurricane Harvey in Texas, Hurricane Irma in Florida, and in Puerto Rico during Hurricane Maria. 
This flag shows that America really can make things happen if we put our mind to it. You know, natural disasters will always be a force to reckon with on this good earth, but rapid response and a clean energy product will ultimately lead to a much cleaner environment. Our next stop, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. You know, this country's been built by a nation of doers, building the American dream with their own hands. But there's a labor shortage right now in America, and the building industry has found a way to fill that labor shortage by teaching the trade skills to our nation's finest, the American vet. Let's take a look. These days, Timothy McCoy has a real passion to learn all about construction. He's been a combat engineer in the U.S. Army for three years, but now that he's transitioning to a civilian life, he wants to pursue his real dream, to be a carpenter and electrician. The Army overall gets you prepared for anything that you actually want to do in this life. I joined the military for foundation. Um, basically, I wanted to learn something that I never learned before. I wasn't uh, a child that got exposed to a lot of things when I was younger, so I wanted to learn and to figure out something that I could use when I get out. Paul Johns was also enlisted in the U.S. Army and transitioned to the Army Reserves, but today he's a project manager with a construction company, thanks to his decision to learn the skills and training needed for carpentry construction. It's definitely kind of surreal because when you're transitioning on the Army, you're unsure of what the future holds. You know, the Army has a lot of great benefits. You know you're going to get paid, you have health care, and leaving that can be stressful and uh, daunting. So it was great having this program, which gave me hard skills to get the job that I have and uh, be financially secure. As they transition from a military to a civilian career, Paul Johns and Timothy McCoy both found the answer to their dream of pursuing a career in construction by signing up for a free workshop program that's been introduced at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. It's a skilled trades training program that began through a partnership between the Home Depot Foundation and the nonprofit Home Builders Institute that promises to help solve America's skilled labor shortage. We're servicing a number of issues here. We're servicing soldiers transitioning out of the military and providing them a skill so that when they get out of the military, they are able to go out and find a job. We're filling an industry gap with over 200,000 empty jobs in the construction industry. And then we're serving the community through economic development by creating jobs and production of homes. They go from having their day set every single day. They've gone from serving their country from having that mission into the unknown. And we want to make sure that we are preparing them for that unknown and making it a good transition for them. And like I said, giving them an opportunity for a career, not just a job. It's teaching these vets all the skills they need to be a professional carpenter, a professional electrician, whatever they want in their civilian career. But it's a sizable investment. In fact, Home Depot Foundation has pledged $50 million to teach 20,000 students over the next 10 years. We really wanted to do is make sure we're training the next generation of tradespeople, of our plumbers, our electricians, our general carpenters, making sure that we've got that, that skilled labor for our future. So the Home Builder Institute uh, trains a number of different skill sets. We have nine or 10 different skill sets and trades that we train. Here at, at uh, Fort Bragg, we're training electrical and carpentry. Here they're cutting, they're measuring, they're drawing the prints, they're drawing it to scale, and they're building scale models over in the carpentry section to where they build a house just like it would be on a job site in scale. And so, so they're learning from the foundation all the way up. There's over 200,000 empty construction jobs. And so this, this is a part of the fix. This is part of a quick fix because in 12 weeks, these soldiers can go out and work on the site. That's, that's a short-term solution. We're, we're also in the correctional system. We're in the juvenile justice system. Um, we're in Job Corps. We train at Job Corps centers throughout the country. The longer term fix is to get society to really understand that this is a good career. It's certainly been a win-win for vets Timothy McCoy and Paul Johns, who are now using the construction skills they've acquired to pursue a newfound civilian career as an electrician and project manager. So I figured that that was one of the things that I wanted to get into with electrical work. 
to find out how to actually make stuff work and light neighborhoods and see if I could create my own neighborhood one day. I'm just an average Joe coming out of the Army, getting into the construction industry, and now I'm a project manager. And uh, I owe a lot of it to the skills and knowledge and abilities I gained from uh, the HBI program. What really drew me to the HBI program was being able to learn from the ground up. Do siding, do roofing, and finish a whole building from the ground up. These veterans in the Skilled Trades program are building themselves a new life in the construction industry. And that's helping us all build a future for this good earth. Our next stop, the rolling hills of Kentucky. We all know how important recycling is to protecting the environment and keeping trash out of our landfills. But the circular economy is especially evident here in Hebron, Kentucky, where waste material has literally found new life in paving our road to the future, as you're about to see. Today, our world cities generate well over 1 billion tons of waste each year. Over 75% of that waste stream is recyclable. But we only recycle about a third of that, which means a vast majority ends up in our nation's landfills. There's 258 million tons of garbage hits the U.S. landfills annually. There's such a need for solution of these products that it's going to take a lot of companies to come together, find value out of these products that go to the landfill, and keep them out of the landfill for the generations to come. Used printer ink and toner cartridges are especially detrimental to our environment. But if recycled, they can have an even more valuable afterlife. If ink and toner cartridges end up in landfills, we know that it will take thousands of years for these to decompose. So if the product does not end up in landfill, it is important to be able to find the value that is still left in these empty ink and toner cartridges. Value can be found in their plastics, value can be found in the metals that are in these cartridges, and even the ink and toner that can come out of these empty cartridges. There are ways to reuse these and put these back into the circular economy. In effect, it means closing the life cycle loop of this challenging waste product by giving it a new sustainable second life as a life that can even be reused to become asphalt in actually paving our nation's highways. One company excels in finding such unique solutions, appropriately called Close the Loop. Close the Loop was founded on the brand promise of zero waste to landfill. And that brand promise has driven an enormous amount of innovation over the years, and we continue to innovate to get these products into the circular economy and to get the raw materials that they're made from back into a circular economy. With operations in Australia, Europe and the US, Close the Loop today is a key provider in finding take-back solutions for many of the global print and imaging manufacturers, including Xerox, Staples, Kyocera, Sharp and Toshiba. For instance, here in Hebron, Kentucky, ink and toner cartridges from across the country are recovered and recycled at its giant automated state-of-the-art facility. This is huge. Tell us about this facility. We're in a 220,000 square foot facility. We have uh, 150 associates here. Uh, we bring in about 20 to 30,000 packages daily that we open up and disposition for our partners. Some of them end up here in, in our recycling line. We believe this is the largest cartridge recycling line in the world. Uh, it, it's capable of handling two to three ton an hour of cartridges. Basically it takes a cartridge that then we have to break up and break it down into its base components. Uh, toner, metal, plastic. At that point we, then we find reuse applications for those commodities. We recovered 39 million pounds last year. Uh, if you look at the average person produces about 1,600 pounds of trash per person. Uh, there's 150 associates here. We, we feel like we're doing our part, but this is just the beginning. Close the Loop provides solutions for our customers. Our customers generally make products. We help them design those products for the end of life, collect the products, and then recover the valuable resources to be reused again in new products. For example, for customers like Lexmark, 
close the loop helped them find a unique new use for its old ink and toner cartridges as a key ingredient in making toner pave asphalt. In fact, Lexmark's entire parking lot here in Lexington, Kentucky has been paved with old recycled imaging material. Toner cartridges like these, which would otherwise have gone straight to a landfill. Originally toner, you would landfill the toner, then waste the energy, and now with the toner pave solution, you're moving up the sustainability hierarchy. You're going to a much more uh, positive solution to lowering the footprint and actually creating a product that's going to last a long time. Close the Loop has also partnered with the Downer Group in Australia to use recycled toner cartridges, plastic and glass to produce a new asphalt product called Toner Plaz. In fact, this has resulted in the first highway in the world actually built from recycled trash near Melbourne, Australia. So for every kilometre of road laid, there's 530,000 plastic bags, there's 168,000 glass bottles, and there's toner from 12,500 printer cartridges. Close the Loop has created such an innovative new product like Toner Plaz that's taking problematic waste streams and turning them into a value-added product to be able to use in road constructions. The performance of the road is enhanced by up to 65%. So it's a win-win. It's a win for our partners and it's a win for the environment. We help our customers and our partners really find value in their return programs and their sustainability programs. We take pride in helping them and finding value in these recovered items. So we do like to say that we are paving the way for the future of sustainability. A road to the future made from yesterday's trash. Thanks to a global steward that's helping the world find treasure in what used to be unwanted trash. I'm John Holden. Thanks for watching.